Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Chewy G-Box. This is another Windows Mini PC that looks really cool, but as you'll see, you can't judge a book by its cover. We're going to be taking a closer look at this device here in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge through GearBest.com. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has approved or reviewed what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get to it now and see what this thing is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. It looks really cool. It doesn't look like those generic boxes we typically see with this kind of hardware configuration. It's got a nice metal band around it here with plastic in the middle. And this has got a Gemini Lake N4100 Intel Celeron processor inside. That's a quad-core chip, uh, the new generation of Intel's low-end devices. Four gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, but it is not upgradable. But you can upgrade the storage. So built in is 64 gigabytes of storage. And then there is a SATA slot underneath the device here. We took it apart on the Extras channel to see how upgradable it might be. Uh, so you can slide in a two and a half inch notebook SSD hard drive, for example. We also saw on the motherboard when we took this apart that there's an NVMe slot for an M2 sized hard drive as well. We didn't uh, test that, but it looks like that's on the motherboard. So you do have some storage options here, but you don't have any options for RAM or processor upgrades. It's got a, a bunch of ports here on the front. So you've got your Type-C port here. This is data only and not video. We tried the video, unfortunately it did not work. So you're just going to get data out that uh, port there. USB 3.0 are going into these two slots here. You have a micro SD card slot right there for plugging in your camera cards and whatnot. On the back here, we've got a reset button. Got your power that goes in here. VGA out, if you still got some old school VGA monitors, you can use that there. It's also got HDMI, and we were able to get 4K at 60 hertz out of the box here, so that was good. Uh, so it does support 4K at 60 frames per second, but there's no other video output to get 4K going. As we saw in some prior reviews, these Gemini Lake chips can support multiple displays, but that USB-C port just did not seem to want to output display for us. Gigabit Ethernet is here. You've got two USB 2.0 ports here and a headphone microphone jack, and that is it uh, for the ports on the device. Now, it costs $240 as you see it at the time that I'm recording this video. It also includes a remote control that we could not get working with the computer at all. It apparently has some air mouse capabilities in addition to some media controls, but it just doesn't seem to work for us one bit. We tried everything we could to get it working. There was no mention in the documentation about the remote. Uh, but if you get one of these things, you'll get the remote, and maybe you'll have better luck getting it working than we did. But unfortunately, it did not get started for us. So let's take a look now and see how it performs, and I'll talk about some of the things we discovered along the way. So let's take a look and see how it performs web browsing. You can see NASA.gov loads up very quickly. It feels about what we've come to now expect from some of these low-end Gemini Lake chips. It's got Ethernet, as we saw at the outset, but it also has AC wireless built in, too, so the Wi-Fi performance felt pretty decent. YouTube also seemed to perform quite well. We were getting uh, no drop frames really on my 1080p 60 frames per second video running in Edge. So all the usual things that we look for seem to be working okay here. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 49.7 on the 1.0 version of that test. 2.0 came in at 33.9. This is pretty much right where I would expect a Gemini Lake chip to perform, but we're seeing very different results uh, based on the machines that we are testing. So we had a Lenovo in recently. That's got the N4000. That one came in at 40.3. We also had the Jumper EasyBook X4, which was a laptop, also with a Gemini Lake chip, same general family here. That one came in at 58.4. So it performed a little better on that test than what we saw uh, out of the Chewy box here. And I think it might have something to do with uh, how they're running the processor based on its thermals. And we're going to talk more about that when we get into our gaming tests in just a second. But before we do, I did want to load up Microsoft Word so you can see how well it handles all the basic kinds of tasks you might do on one of these mini PCs, and it did them uh, quite well, as you can see here. So let's move on now to gaming and thermals. So we'll kick things off with Minecraft, which didn't do so well on this mini PC versus some of the others we've looked at. 
1080p with the OptiFine Performance Enhancing plugin installed only got us about 25 to 30 frames per second, give or take. Probably playable, but I think you might do better with an Intel NUC that has more active cooling built into it. We also ran Half-Life 2, which is an older game. Uh, that one is doing pretty well, actually, as it does on other Gemini Lake-based devices. We're seeing about 40 frames per second in some of the complex scenes and some of the less complex scenes got us to 60. Uh, Rocket League, however, did not fare very well. At 720p, the best we could get out of it was about 12 to 15 frames per second. So again, if you have one of those Intel NUCs, you might be able to do uh, better in Rocket League than what you're seeing here on screen right now. We also ran the 3D Mark CloudGate test, which we run on all of our PCs. And there we got a score of 2,226. And this puts it pretty much within the margin of error uh, compared to some of the other Gemini Lake-based machines we have tested here on the channel recently. So all in, it seems to be performing where I would expect it to, just not spectacularly, uh, especially for gaming. Now, I do want to move on to the thermal performance. In other words, how well does it do uh, under load? Because this computer is fanless. There's no active cooling system on it. And one of the concerns that I had when I took it apart is that its only means of cooling is a flat metal plate that is on top of the processor and some of the key components of the motherboard. And the marketing materials lead you to think there's a nice big radiator on top of that metal plate, but when we took it apart, all it was was just the plate. So that heat doesn't really have much place to go, although it does have vents on it. I don't know if that's going to be enough here to keep it cooled. So we ran uh, the 3D Mark stress test, which runs one of these benchmark tests over and over again. And there we got a score of 90%, which is actually a failing grade on that test. Passing is 97%. So I think you will uh, see a lot of throttling on this the more that you stress the computer out. And I'm concerned over time that uh, you might have some heating issues just given it doesn't really have a very good cooling system built in. So I think if you're looking for something to really tax the computer, uh, this may not be the right computer for you. You might want to look at a mini PC that has a fan built in. Again, the Intel NUCs have some active cooling to keep them operating more consistently under load. And we also tested its prowess as a home theater PC with Kodi. We've got the Jellyfish test file here running 4K 10-bit, 140 megabits per second, and it looks like it's running okay after it gets started. There's a lot of drop frames at the outset, but after that it seems to play back those files just fine. Uh, we have seen similar behavior on one or two other Gemini Lake machines that we've gotten in recently to test. Generally, uh, this should not drop that many frames at the outset, but it does smooth out, so it might be okay for that. Uh, one of the things, though, with these Gemini Lake chips is that they don't support HDR. Uh, even the Intel NUC, the flagship of this low-end line, uh, doesn't support HDR, so it's probably not well suited for a 4K home theater. We also tested 1080p Blu-ray MKV rips, and those did play back just fine. It was able to switch my TV into 24p mode, which is what I always look for, and it was also able to pass lossless audio, DTS HD, and Dolby True HD over to my audio receiver. So it should do okay as a 1080p playback device, but probably not something I would recommend as a 4K home theater. And one last thing to check out, and that is its Linux support. We booted up Ubuntu 18.04, and everything worked as we hoped it would. So we got audio, Wi-Fi, video worked properly. Everything seemed to be uh, working as expected, so you could easily get Linux installed on this machine and run it. So that's going to do it for the Chewy G-Box. I really like the way it looks and feels on the outside, but I was disappointed by what was inside. Uh, namely the fact that we don't seem to have a very good thermal strategy going on with this computer. Uh, no heat sink, as the marketing uh, materials might suggest, just a metal plate that uh, relies on enough passive airflow, hopefully, to keep the computer cooled off. They certainly could have done better there. I was also disappointed that our USB Type-C port does not output any kind of video, uh, which means that you can only get one 4K output going on this device at all. Uh, many other Gemini Lake machines, including those Intel NUX we looked at, could actually do two 4K 60 Hz outputs through dual HDMI. Uh, here you don't have the option for a second HDMI, and the best you're going to get is VGA out of it. So that's going to do it for the Chewy G-Box here. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Bill Reiner, 
and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.